All right, what's good, uh, people on YouTube? This your boy Stuck It Beats back with a brand new video today. I want to show you guys um, how to mix a beat and make it sound professional. This is a video I've been asked by so many people. Uh, there's a guy Flex Beats from Nigeria. He told me, man, I don't know how to mix. Uh, could you do a video on? How to mix a bit and make it sound professional so this one is for you flex beats and uh, other people who uh wanna learn how to mix a bit and make it sound a pro i'll be doing that with a uh, fab filter I normally use fab filter pro q yeah it's just a, a good eq that i love using in my uh, recent productions and i love it so without any further ado let's get into this uh i'll let you guys listen to the beat and uh then we'll we'll begin uh the mixing so here here is the beat All right, that is it. Just a simple, it's just a repetition. So there's nothing that is unique here and here is just a repetition of the old beat. So the first thing I normally do, don't worry about my sound volume. I think my recording software is uh, is doing some kind of shit, is eating up my sound, but it's fine. I uh, hope you guys will still understand what I want to say. So first of all, I normally start by soloing uh each instrument one by one i mean i mix each instrument separately so we turn off all the instruments that is the first step i normally do and bam we are good to go this one and this one do not have any so we delete delete let's work with instruments that are there so number one it depends with which instrument you want to start with but I normally like to start with the drums, uh, mostly the kick, then the snare or clap, or the clap, then the kick. For this one, I'm going to start with the clap because I feel the clap is uh, sounds a little bit sweet. So I'll begin with the clap. I will loop that part. Okay. So... That's how my clap sounds. So what we do, we put an EQ on that channel. You can see the spectrum view. Basically with mixing, what you do, you, you're cleaning up sound and creating space for other instruments in the mix. So for this one, uh, let me just turn up the volume of my monitors a little bit so that I can hear everything really, really nice. Okay. There, sounds cool. So I'm going, I'm going to start by cutting the low end here. This is just a part I don't want in that clap. So we'll put a low, a low cut about 24 decibels uh i don't know what the oct means uh you can google that so i'm going to move this eq uh till i hear there's a change in the voice uh or the sound of the clap and then i'll pull it back and uh, find a sweet spot so Let's do that. Mm -hmm. I 
I like it somewhere there. Next, when I listen to this club, there's some sound pa, 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 that sounds uh, awful in the mid range. So, uh, what I'll do, I'll look for it and then I'll cut it. So, let's do that. I'm actually going to cut this sound because I don't like it. So I'll do negative two. And we listen. Make it a little bit large. Something like that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. Then I'm going to boost my high a little bit. Let me do just one dB. Then there's this side that is too high also. I'm going to cut it. I put the high cut. This one I'll make it sharper. Make it 40. Make it 72. Then I'll cut. Just make sure you don't you don't do that. Maintain the sweetness of the clap or the snare. Alright. That one is better. Next I'm going to introduce a compressor. I'm going to introduce a compressor. Uh Let's make this one three, the ratio. This one can remain that way and then we can compress. Don't overdo uh, your compression because it will sound shit when you'll be mastering. So just a little bit. And... Uh, Let's see, maybe I can do a makeup gain of 2 dB. Uh huh. Let me check my meter. Next, I'm going to introduce my reverb to the club. Uh, I have a reverb saved somewhere. Reverb. I normally use it on vocals and instruments. So I saved it somewhere here. Reverb, reverb, reverb. Reverb, reverb, yeah. So the return channel. I'll introduce the reverb. I should not put it too much. Let us compress the reverb first of all. I mean side chain, the reverb to the club. Just a little bit of it. Alright. Uh, we are done with that one. Maybe you can add the delay, but it's not a must. Depends with what kind of sound you want to create. Because if you put too much delay on your drums, they will sound shit also. I just put a little bit and I also still side chain it. I'll do a tutorial about side chaining reverb to a vocals and drums and the rest of your instruments because it brings some good feeling also. Next I'll introduce my kick. Okay, so I'll solo it also, then introduce my EQ to it. Now, if you if you really don't know how to EQ your kick, this is where I should pay attention, because 
a kick is normally the dominant instrument in, in any song so if you don't make it sound sweet or nice uh, nobody will ever enjoy listening to that music or it will not have that big feeling when it is playing somewhere in the club so first of all let us look at the spectrum um okay so first of all with the kick i know you have seen this in so many tutorials on youtube you start by rolling off your muddy side on the low end and also you do a little bit of a cut uh, on um, the highs and then you clear up the mid and make it sound sweet so uh, let's do that Let's cut the highs. Um, make it about thirty. Thirty. Eh, thirty. This English man. <laughs> so here I'll make it about thirteen. About thirteen. Is it thirteen thousand? You must make sure you you maintain your that uh is it a click can i call it a click in the kick you should not cut it not cut it that way or that way you should just maintain that uh, click on the kick because it makes it sound sweet so you cut it around 13 uh thousand hertz next we clean up our mid range as i had said earlier so let's do that Okay, I'm gonna cut that. I'll do it negative three. Oh, you can listen. It depends on the kind of drums you're using, so you can listen to your kick. Uh, and try to find that mud side on the on the on the drum sample because different kind of drum samples have uh, different kind of frequencies in the spectrum view of, the, of an eq um i think this one sounds a little bit nice but i'll still have to check it a bit later because um uh, this is not a final mix it's just a tutorial to help you guys out there Next, I'll introduce my compressor and I'll show you how I normally set it. <coughs> so for your kick, uh, I normally set the ratio to 4. And then my attack is normally at 5. My release is normally at 65. Okay. And then... I do not compress also a lot just compress a little bit so we are going to, to to introduce the compressor till we hear the compression is too much and then we'll pull back so let's do that that is too much so we pull back till it sounds nice uh, sounds sweet there so i'm going to leave it at that and then also you should mix your kick in mono so i'm going to introduce the utility this is for blaton and i'm going to turn the width down to zero because your kick should be in mono always so remember that do not introduce reverb and uh, um, and and delay on your kick 
because uh, your kick drum should sound sweet so it cannot sound nice with, with the reverb and delay then maybe you can add a limiter on it um, to make it sound fat sexy <laughs> so do not also overdo it because it will sound uh, shit when you'll be mastering so you just do a little bit let it touch the highs like that so we listen to it with our clap next I'm, I'm going to introduce um, um, my hi-hat and I'm also going to solo it and EQ it now here is when you now start introducing a percussion uh, and the hi-hats they are not really hard to EQ and also it's not a must for you to use compression and limit on them depends with how they are sounding uh, but most of the time you see a compressor to to cut down the high 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 frequencies that may be uh, injuring your ears so let's get it to sound sweet I'll introduce a little bit of compression to it. Just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. And I'll turn it down also. Try to balance it. Ah, excuse me. I also have some other percussion somewhere here. It is panned to the right. But it has no EQ and compression, so we'll go and make it sweet. So we introduce our EQ. Um, where have you gone, man? Pro-Q, 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 Pro-Q. Yeah. So I'm going to cut off these uh, low frequencies here because they make it sound muddy so we take them away but also make sure you don't get a lot uh, into its sweet spot um, yeah I'm going to cut this one negative one maybe I'll, I might boost here and also I'll cut the high end all right all right next I'll introduce this uh, triangle mute I used here this one to the left so I'll make it sound sweet this one is hurting my ear so I'll start by introducing a limiter on it just a little bit don't make it too much a little bit a little bit a little bit then next I'll introduce my EQ now let's use ProQ yeah so we'll cut it and make keep it in the in the spectrum mm -hmm. let's keep it there let's keep it there then i'll introduce my compressor also 
just a little bit uh -huh. we are about to finish the percussion let's add the seal one snare and uh, some shaker somewhere so this one is pan to the left we can pan this one 30 percent left stay down because we don't want them to fight also because mixing is also about balancing so you also EQ it basically you EQ everything all your instruments and make them sound sweet and sit in the spectrum view also oh shit so this one very quickly I'll put it there it doesn't sound too bad I'll give it a little bit of delay, of reverb and delay. It's a little bit. It doesn't sound too awful, so I'll not int introduce any compression on it. <coughs> Next, I introduce this snare. It's a snare layer with uh, my clap. So I'll turn it down. Make sure they're not colliding. Then we can EQ it also, make it sound sweet. Roll off the low end. Roll off the high end. Sounds shit here, sounds shit here, sounds. Then you can also look for the. the part that sounds muddy in the mid and cut it Just a little bit so you play so you should make sure you balance your volumes pretty much well and also make sure your EQ sounds sweet balance everything so that they can be heard clearly and they are not fighting each other in the mix in my club i reduce it a little bit and then this percussion will also go down you can keep changing this until you get the final um sweet sound because you still i still normally um, export projects i go listen to them on different um environments and i hear a lot of changes that i'm supposed to make and i still come back and change them um also when you 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 add vocals to your instrumentals there's also a lot of changes that are normally there you hear you should boost up some instruments you should take others down or when you master so mixing is not something that you just do in a day or 30 minutes and finish you have to keep going back again and listening to the mix and also give it to people and get it some good feedback that really also he uh, help you um build your mix to sound sweet um so i think i'm done with the instruments what i normally do i uh, actually like doing this a lot on all of my mixes i normally group all my percussion together except the kick because my kick i normally group it with the bass and then apply a glue a glue compressor <laughs> um so i'm going to do that on my percussion i'm going to group them and introduce a glue compressor so let's do that group 
then we rename the group percussion percussion then I introduce a glue compressor right there not too much just a little bit that's enough Chan 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 chan. What am I recording? Okay, next I'm going to introduce my bass. So I'm also going uh, to do the same with what I've done with the other instruments. I'm going to EQ, uh, side chain, and do a lot of stuff with my instruments. So I hope you guys learn something. I'm going. To, I'm not going to talk a lot, but I hope you people will see uh, what is happening and get to learn something. If you have a question, ask me down in the description. I'll answer. So let's go. This is how to EQ your, your, your bass. This one is actually sweet. Doesn't have a lot of the highs. So just do a little bit of a cut right there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we also cut the lows. Cut it a little bit. Just about 30. Um, depending on the kind of base you're using, you can also find some muddy parts right here and um, make them sound sweet. Or you can find some sweet, pos sweet spots and uh, boost them to make it sound sweet. So let me try look for something that will sound sweet or bad here. Not hearing anything. Okay, what what I think I can do here, I can create space for my bass from where my kick is. Um, I'm going to find this spot where my kick is and cut it a little bit to give my bass some space to pop up in the mix. So you go back to where your EQ is. That was about 125. Right here. Not much. Just do negative 1 dB cut. Uh, I make the band a little bit flat. This one really helps when you you um you finish your mix and you export the song final and you have mastered it. Makes it sound sweet. Next I'm going to side chain my bass to the kick. So I'll bring my compressor. In a blade on it's normally easy to side chain. 
not like uh, FL Studio, you have to do a lot of automation. Just bring a compressor, hit this little bit, this little um, arrow facing down. Turn this one to orange. Then you select your audio. So I want to sidechain my bass to the kick, so I select kick. And then I can mess with my threshold, attack and release till I find something sweet. The rest I'm going to leave them right there. So just a little bit. Make sure it does not sound shit. It should just sound sweet also. We just put a little bit something like that. Also add a little bit of the limiter to the base. Just a little bit. Then I, uh, another thing I like doing is grouping my kick and my bass and introduce a glue compressor. So let's do that. Glue compressor on that. Just a little bit. Next, I'm going to introduce my piano. Solo it out. Now, this is another thing I normally like doing. I sometimes use presets because Ableton has some sweet presets. Oh, this one is um, an acoustic piano. No, that one is a piano. I normally bring either of these two, uh, the uh, the Q in in uh, in Ableton. So I normally choose which one will sound sweet, but mostly I normally use the second part because I don't really like going into a lot of processing of the piano because it's, uh, it might sound also awful but also you can check uh, this EQ and try to get something from that it's not wrong to use presets yeah, it just depends on the kind of sound you want to do and um, yeah and um, what you want to get so i can see they did a little bit a little cut on the low then a little on the mid and boosted the highs a little bit sounds nice so what i normally do after adding that one i just normally introduce a compressor to it just a little bit don't do a lot of that what professionals do is that they do not use too much compression they do not use too much of limiting they just a little bit to make the sound sound sweet and then they balance the volumes and makes their production sound sweet so i'm also going to introduce some reverb to my piano also don't put too much reverb and delay because it might kill your piano or your sound next i'm going to introduce a guitar and i'm also still going to do the same process ueq this one has too much reverb on it. If an instrument has reverb in its presets, make sure you remove it and process it yourself. So 
So for the guitar, this is what I normally do. There's something here that sounds like it's ringing. So I'm going to cut it. So cut that. Put a little bit of compressor of compression on it. And then we can introduce some delay and reverb. Okay, sounds sweet. Next, I'm going to mix this synth. So we still do the same. We EQ. I've already said if an instrument has um, some reverb on it, make sure it is out and process it yourself. Uh, so we EQ. Going to cut that part about negative two dB, and also I'll clear the highs just a little bit. Sweet. I'm going to introduce a little bit of delay.
Okay. How many instruments do you still have? We still have some muted. I'm not going to add this one. Uh, let's add this one. Okay. I'm going to cut this one the low. And also I'm going to clear the the highs because if you listen to these two instruments you can hear that they are fighting the mix and mixing is about clearing stuff and making them sound clear so I'm going to make sure that they are not sounding that way what the fuck I think I should pan one of them. We pan this one to the left. And I think I can also let's pan this one to the right and see. I think I like it that way. Okay, let me compress this one just a little bit also. Okay, let us introduce our lead, our main lead that is, sounds like this. So let's say Q. Okay, I'll cut this point because it sounds somehow nasty. So I do a negative two cut. Sounds sweet. And 
can boost the highs a little bit about um, 2 dB. On here it has some reverb and delay. Let's try get that out. Get out the reverb. Process it ourselves. I'm going to introduce my delay. For this one, I'm actually going to side chain my delay on it because I hear it's um it's introducing some kind of different sound. Okay. Uh, next, we still have two more instruments. We have our muted guitar. Get it to sit in the mix. Then we EQ. I'm going to cut out going to cut out the low I'm going to cut this part there is some screeching sound there is it screeching or screeching whatever Let's take away our high also a little bit. A bit of delay. Okay, sounds cool. We still have our crash, so let's make it sound sweet. For this one also, I normally use a preset in a Blaton. Uh, where is the EQ, EQ and then instrument and uh, there's the cymbal. I mean drums and there is the cymbal, cymbal, cymbal. Is it cymbal or cymbal? Cymbal. I like it because it makes my cymbals or my crashes to sound sweet. And then, and I might like also to introduce some little bit of delay. A um, little bit of delay to the cymbal. That is too much. It's a little bit that way. So I think we are done with the mix. I still have to listen to it again and balance out some stuff. But I hope the video helped you guys. So let's li let's listen to the beat again.
yeah hope you guys some learned something new uh from this channel um please like this video uh share comment subscribe if you have any question leave it down in the description i'll, I'll um, get back to you uh, with an appropriate answer for it i've been your boy stuck it beats till next time have a nice time